Good morning, Facebook. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good morning. It is a Thursday. Is it June 3rd or June 4th? I'm not sure, but it's Thursday. And I am outside in the garden, and it is probably about 7.30, 7.40. I'm not 100% sure, because um, I don't have my computer in front of me, but it is um, Thursday here uh, in the Hudson Valley. Uh, it's supposed to be it's a decent day today, mid 70s, and only uh, I guess rain a little later in the afternoon. Um, we're supposed to have jazz tonight back here uh, in the garden. Uh, John, Simon, and friends are supposed to be back here. I'm not sure what's happening with that. They um, were talking about canceling because of the uh, the weather, the um, the forecast because of the rain. Uh, so I'm back here in my new garden. Good morning, everybody who's tuning in. Thank you, thank you. So I'm back here in the garden. I want to talk about all those pots and pans. Um, that's the title of this. Uh, so I'm going to talk about, um, about cooking your food safely at home, um, what to look for, what not to look for in pots and pans. So let's see. Um, this week, our crab mac and cheese is $9.99 to go. Uh, that's this week's special, the week-long special. Tonight's special is $9.99 burgers. We've recently increased the size of our burgers. Um, so they're another ounce bigger um, so uh, and same value. So that's the good news. Uh, let's see. Um, do you think think anything else before I jump right into the goods here? Um, Elmville Streets, uh, the um, where they close the streets off to traffic and open it for um, dining, that is happening this weekend. I don't know who the musicians are uh, or musician. This weekend, I don't know who that is, uh, but there should be somebody playing out in front of the Shadowland. Uh, hopefully soon we'll be able to start doing our oyster or lobster bakes and oysters again out front. Hopefully soon um, we'll keep you posted on that. In the meantime, we have free popcorn, cotton candy, um, cornhole, and we'll put a couple tables out there. It's a good time, but a lot of the action is back here, so... Uh, like really our backyard is packed here. Um, we put some more tables in here. The more and more we can open up, uh, which we're at, I don't even know what we're at, 75 or almost 100% now, um, and three feet social distancing. We have, was able to put a few more tables back here last week. Good morning, everybody tuning in. If you can just do me a favor and drop a, a comment, hashtag live or hashtag replay, that'd be great. Um, or just drop a comment, say hello. The more you comment, the more the people get to see this. And I'm gonna share some important, important information about cookware. Um, so if you've been into the garden, you have seen that we have um, all these pans, pots and pans hanging out here on the wall. There's some more right over there. Uh, some bigger ones, some bigger rondos. There's a pot over there. Um, and you have all these right here. And somebody said to me the other day, they go, oh, wow, are those all all clad pans? And I said, I wish those were all all clad pans. Those are not all clad pans. Those are cheap aluminum pans that I spray painted silver. Um, and why do I have cheap aluminum pans here? Well, several years ago, well, not several years ago, when we first opened, lots of years ago, 18 years ago, um, we couldn't afford um, high quality pots and pans. So what did I do? Um, like 95% of all the other restaurants out there, I went and bought um, these inferior pots, pots and pans, these aluminum ones, knowing that knowing that it really wasn't the right answer, um, but to get open, and when you first open a restaurant, um, you run out of money very quickly. And after you've been open for a couple of years, you still run out of money very quickly. And even sometimes after 10 years, you're gonna run out of money very quickly. So um, restaurants are a tough business. But so in the beginning, um, that was all we could afford. Those are literally like $10 pans. You go to Sam's Club, you can buy those, or Restaurant Depot, or any 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 um, big store, uh, or, any, or any food service distributor will sell you a $10 aluminum uh, saute pan. So that's what we did, we stocked up with those, and they kept breaking very easily, like really breaking. Um, the rivets in them would break, and the rivets are, are the, the fasteners here. So these rivets would break, and after like two years, three years of that, and we kind of like had a little bit of financial financial grasp or grip, um, every pan I would replace, I would start replacing them with all clads or um, uh, alternative surgical stainless steel, uh, surgical stainless steel pans, all clad being a fantastic brand. Um, and there's some other really good brands out there uh, through restaurant supply houses. But these pans are literally four or five times the price of those pans back there. Now, the advantage to this, now we've replaced almost every single pot and pan. This is another stainless steel one here. Um, this is a sauce pot. 
Uh, we have the big rondos now that are stainless. We have the big, big, big stock pots that that, that are all stainless, and they're significant. Some of those stock pots will go to four hundred dollars um, in the stainless steel version, as opposed to fifty, sixty bucks in the non-stainless steel. So you can see you can see the, the aluminum price versus the, the stainless steel price. But here's the big difference, folks. Besides the price, every time you cook in one of those aluminum pans and you heat it up, you start leach you start leaching out aluminum into your food. Um, this is why I am so against like aluminum foil, um, baking, like wrapping potatoes in aluminum foil, um, putting hot things, uh, like really hot things into aluminum foil, um, reheating things in aluminum foil. Not a good idea at all. Every time you do that, same thing with styrofoam. Every time you put hot food in the styrofoam, you slowly leach the styrenes. Well, every time you put hot food and start cooking in aluminum, you slowly leach aluminum. Now, most chefs know this. In fact, I think all chefs know that you don't put like white wine, you don't put tomatoes, you don't put cream, certain things into those aluminum because it really reacts with certain high acid foods and certain foods. There's a reaction there. So I think every chef owner knows that. Um, I mean, that's what we're taught. You don't, you, you don't do that. Um, but because of budgets and because people just don't care in general, those aluminum pans still keep happening. So instead of throwing aluminum pans away 10 years ago, eight years ago, because they were just stacked up in the, in, the, in the storage room, I decided to paint them silver and hang them up here. And so that's what all those pans are doing here. Those are old saute pans that we used to use um, before we could afford the good high quality surgical stainless steel pans. So, and these are like much, much heavier. These never warp, by the way, and the rivets never go bad. I've never lost a single one of these pans to rivets. So for every four pans of those I was buying, I could have easily, easily bought one, and this is what we do. And these pans are so durable, and the all-clads are insane. All-clads come with like a lifetime guarantee, too. That's why you're gonna pay $90 for an all-clad, and we have several all-clads in the kitchen. Um, so there's a bunch of different brands um, that we use that are all stainless. So, um, you know, it makes it worse in a kitchen. What makes it worse in a commercial kitchen is when they're using those saute pans, those aluminum saute pans, and they take a metal spoon, and they basically take that spoon and they stir whatever they're cooking because then they're scraping the aluminum until they're adding heat, expanding the aluminum, leaching it into the food, and then scraping it into the food. And I've seen chefs do this for years, and I still see restaurants that do this. You know, so it's funny when restaurants say, you know, that the, you know, they, they're farm to table, they use all the best ingredients, they're this and that, and they're this and that. And then you look in the kitchen, 90% of those restaurants are using that, those aluminum pans and think nothing of it or no, and are still using them. So at home, what can you do at home? Now, Teflon is just as bad. Um, avoid Teflon, avoid aluminum, spend the extra money. These, if we, this pan is 10 years old. This pan is 10 years old and we use this pan every single day and it is in fantastic shape. When you buy pans like this, they will last a lifetime at home. These are like the last pots and pans that you will probably ever need to buy. So don't, don't buy the cheap, I mean, you can feel, you can, when you pick up a pan, you can feel how heavy it is. Go to the store and just pick up several different saute pans and you'll feel. One of the cool things is every now and then in was it Marshalls and Marshalls, they'll have nice all clad pans. So I'll go into Marshalls and like buy gifts for um, for people, for other people I know that cook, I will buy some all clad pans and they're typically a good price. Um, you can probably, you probably save 30, 40% sometimes. You have to take what they have as far as size and shape. Uh, for our Airbnb, I put some all clads in there and some nice Volraths and some really nice, and I went to, I kept monitoring Marshalls and when they had some nice pots and pans out, uh, some good stainless steel stuff I bought and I took advantage and I bought, I bought so, um, there are some really, really good deals sometimes we had in those stores, but you can go in and just pick up the pans and feel the difference. Like the lighter it is, the less quality it is. That's, that's just, that just goes to the territory. You want something that's heavy, like a lobster. Lobster is, is heavy for its, for its size, they say. Um, that's because they're not, um, they've not eaten their flesh inside um, and they're still, um, um, you know, full of, full of, uh, full of the, what happens with lobsters when you put them in a tank, um, they start. They stop eating, and they start eating their in their, their flesh, their own flesh. That's the survival mechanism they have. So when you pick up two lobsters that are the same size, you always want to take the heavier one, because the other one. Not saying the other one's that's bad or terrible or dead, but that's just a natural process. Like when salmon start swimming up the stream, they start consuming their fat reserves, and the salmon becomes less weight, um, less nutritious, uh, things like that. So I've done many salmon videos on on the difference of that. 
Um, so yeah, so go to the store, pick up pants, and you'll feel right away um, the difference. Now, the thing that aluminum, the only thing aluminum has really going for it, it's a great conductor of heat. That's like it. Um, so sometimes they'll make these pans, these stainless steel pans with aluminum cores to conduct the heat. Um, so, but as long as the pan is lined in stainless steel, we buy 100% stainless in and out. Um, and um, surgical grade is the key. Because sometimes cheap stainless steel, they'll reuse um, all kinds of stainless steel can go get into it. So surgical is the actual term you're looking for. Um, if you're buying it, all clads are automatically surgical stainless steel, as far as I've done my research in the past. So that's the story of that. Avoid aluminum, avoid aluminum exposure. And we had a friend once who, um, who was a baker. Um, we still, she still is a friend. She still is a friend. In fact, she was in the other night eating. And years and years ago, like 20, 25 years ago, she came down with MS. And she was a baker, um, a pastry shop in New York City, and all those pans and those cake pans and everything are all aluminum. Most bake shops are all aluminum. And you're sitting there baking cakes and baking things inside these. And she came down with MS. Um, she went to the Ann Wigmore Institute in Puerto Rico, detoxed, and learned how to um, learn the environmental factors in her life, in, in her environment, all the environmental toxins. And she got rid of all of the aluminum, got rid of all of them, stopped cooking aluminum, stopped baking aluminum, got rid of all this, and was able to severely improve her MS, where 20 years later she was in the other night, and you can't even tell she was diagnosed with MS. And she attributed it to all that aluminum toxicity um, that was in all of her food, all of her baked goods, all that kind of stuff. She totally attributed it to that. She went to the Ann Wigmore, detoxified, cleansed, did chelation therapy, did all this natural stuff, and switched the a, um, her all of her aluminum out of the kitchen, gone, all in the stainless steel, and um, you can't even tell she had was diagnosed with MS. So, um, folks, that stuff gets into your food. It really gets into your food. And the biggest thing for Jamie and I is always that the food that we cook here is the food that we personally eat. Um, so, like, I just recently switched from sunflower oil to rice oil because I know that sunflower oil, certain seed oils, so seed oils in general, are not good for male testosterone. And I'm eating the food all the time, so I'm like, gee, you know what? This probably I should probably look at something a little more nutritious, um, not negatively affect my testosterone or anybody's testosterone. Uh, so these are things that Jamie and I are always like thinking about and pondering and trying to get to the next level. And of course, I always say we're not perfect. There's always improvements we can do, but Jamie and I are very, very, very conscious about everything. I did an interview yesterday, and the person I interviewed was like super impressed because. You know, he was coming up from New York City trying to get a job up here, and he's like, I researched all these places, and your restaurant just keeps coming up. I went into your website, your philosophy, and he goes, now I come here and I see it firsthand, and I can see, like, behind the bar everything. He goes, and your farm to table goes behind the bar, too, to, to you know, vineyard to table as well. And I go, that's, that's our passion. So that's our passion, and uh, this is what we do. So he was super, super impressed. Um, so that is, uh, that's the deal, folks. Stay away from the aluminum. Avoid the aluminum cookware. Avoid the Teflon cookware. Surgical stainless steel. It'll be those will be the last pots and pans you buy. Um, you know, so don't don't look at don't look at the upfront sticker price because this being ten years old and us using it or abusing it every day, um, this pan is perfectly fine. If you had this at home, um, I literally literally cook on this pan probably 10, 20 times a night. And we have several of these. You know, we have a couple dozen of these, but they hang there, and those pans get empty every night. They get washed. They get put back up in the middle of service. They get used, pulled back down, put back up. That'll happen throughout the course of the night, 10, 10 times or so, a dozen times, where we go through every single saute pan this size, and that's our main saute pan. So um, you get what you pay for, folks. And when you are able to able to buy the better stuff, you will definitely, definitely, you know, it's, a, it's the right tool for the right job. Totally the right tool for the right job, you know. You're trying to use the wrong size screwdriver. Um, it, it's, it's terrible. When you get a pan, that is super high quality, um, heat, heats up better, it cooks better, it holds heat better. It's just an amazing thing all around. Now, the nice thing about these pans is you can actually take this whole pan and pop it right into your oven. So you don't have to worry about the pan, pan, uh, pans with the plastic handles and this and that. Now this handle does get very hot, which means you have to make sure you have a dish towel around or a mitt around, an oven mitt, because these pans do get very hot. But the nice thing is you can pop this whole thing right in the oven and if you're baking something, um, Pop something in the oven. You can sear salmon in here or a piece of steak in here and just pop it in the oven for a couple minutes and finish it off and flip it. It's great. Um, so, and always try to buy them with tight fitting lids. The, uh, the, um, 
saucepans because that is a really, really, really big help having a tight, tight fitting saute, tight fitting lid that goes on there. All right, folks, that's it. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Appreciate, um, appreciate all the support. Um, I see Cheryl's on, I see Arnie's on, Ralph's on. Um, just drop a couple, uh, yeah, Pamela. So just drop a comment, folks, if you're tuning in live, hashtag live, it's on the replay, hashtag replay. Um, and um, if you know anybody that has aluminum pans at home or a restaurant that has aluminum pans, share this video with them. Most restaurants, I would say 90% of restaurants have aluminum pans. I mean, some of the, the fanciest, nicest restaurants, most expensive restaurants we go to, I always peek in the kitchen, I peek in the kitchen anywhere. And you peek in the kitchen and all the aluminum pans are stacked right there. And I'm like, for the prices you're charging, you should be using all stainless steel in, the, in this kitchen. Um, especially if they knew the cost factor of how much they were actually throwing away you know, these pans. Now that's proof right there. That's our pan graveyard right there. Those are only from like the first three, four years we were open. I mean, just you can go pick up any of those pans and you can see every rivet's busted. They're all warped. Um, inside is scraped because, you know, aluminum scrapes out, especially when you're, you can just see all those pans there. And I feel bad that we ever had those pans here. Um, but if I didn't, if I ran, <laughs> it, it, there were certain things we had to compromise in the very, very beginning. Or else we wouldn't have been able to open our doors. And um, knowing that it was wrong, I knew enough to change it. And that was one of my first goals. I mean, the day that we started buying, I also, we still, we still buy stainless steel saute pans. Um, if I can, if there's something I need, we still buy new ones. Like these sauce pots, you can never have enough of these sauce pots. Um, just just a great size and the smaller ones. So I remember when I still, we started buying them and I was like so relieved, so relieved that to stop using those and you know for the first time you know, we would buy two or three of these and it would add up like 150 bucks and we're like oh my gosh like how can we afford it but slowly 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 so that was the uh, goal in mind all right folks thanks for tuning in um jazz tonight in the garden we'll have to stay late uh, stay tuned for an announcement later i believe they're they're canceling uh they were concerned about the rain yesterday because the garden is a hot spot here now um if it is on nice days folks we actually sit out it's 100 percent uh, patio dining out here, garden dining, 100% on the nicer days. If it's rainy and crummy and crappy, then we'll go back to inside. Uh, we just can't have our staff run out here in the um, in the rain and cold weather. I think more than ever right now, people are, are, are very, very comfortable coming into a restaurant. I think they're extremely comfortable coming into a restaurant, um, as we see. So that's just, uh, I mean, obviously with everything that's been happening, vaccines and everything, I think people are, are much more comfortable. And, and um, so comfort levels there for inside. Um, if you're not comfortable coming inside, if you are freaked out still, um, call and make sure we're doing out, outdoor dining. Um, if you're freaked out about being outside um, anywhere, especially in a restaurant outside, then probably don't go to that restaurant. Um, get food to go. Don't make, um, don't make everybody around you crazy. Not saying it's right or wrong. Your beliefs, those are your beliefs. Um, but everybody in restaurants are trying to do their best and do, do their job right now. And as we know, this, as we know, any industry right now um, is suffering terrible um, unemployment. Um, one of our major distrib distribution companies that we use five days a week, six days a week, just cut their deliveries back by half, almost three times their minimums. And I said the sales so what's going on? She's like, Marcus, we just don't have we don't have enough drivers. We don't have enough we don't have enough drivers to cover our routes. We just we can't we we can't physically do this. Um, so we had to make some drastic changes after 30 years. We had to make some drastic changes to eliminate a lot of days, to, to almost triple minimums, and in hopes that you know the drivers are going out less, more consolidation of your orders. And I said, well, you know, obviously I can't order six days a week. I'm going to go down to three days a week, which is what they were hoping because that's one le that's a less three days of a driver that's here less by doing that. So that worked in my equation, but other restaurants might just get a new distributor. I don't know. I've been interviewing a few people lately um, and the ones that actually do show up to work, believe it or not, all want cash. And they're very upfront about it. They're like, oh, you don't pay cash? I'm like, well, no, we're a legit business. You get a paycheck, you pay taxes. Um, they're like, no, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't work for, for on the books, I, 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 I benefits. Like you have benefits? Well, yeah, yeah, I get unemployment or I'm on workman's comp. I get, I get benefits, so I can't lose my benefits. And this is, I've had this conversation year after year after year, but right now this conversation is happening constantly with people. Um, and in the past it's always been like, in the past it, you, you peg these people when they come in and they're like, you pay cash, right? And I know one of two things. 
they're avoiding child support. That's probably the number one reason why people want cash where they work, especially in the restaurant industry, is because they're avoiding child support. And it happens every time, and it catches up with them. Once child support catches up with them in five, six months, and they figure out that the person's working here and they start deducting their wages, that person's usually gone. They usually decide, okay, time to get a new job so I can work another four or five months again and either off the books so I'm not all totally under the radar or um, until it catches up at that next job. And it's like a cycle I've seen over the last 18 years, like clockwork. As soon as they start taking workman's comp, I'm sorry, as soon as they're like, uh, uh, child support out of their check, I just I, I know automatically, hey, this person has a month left here and they're getting a new job and they're leaving and it's a shame. But when typically when people come in and ask for cash, it's because they're, they're, they don't want to pay child support. Uh, they don't, uh, they're already getting benefits somehow. Um, and I've been told by people, oh, well, if I bake too much, the government's gonna take away my phone. This was years and years ago that things like that were happening. But now it's like the conversation is constant with people that are applying for jobs. You pay off the books, right? You pay off the books. I'm like, like where like where do people think that you can just go anywhere and just work for off the books? I'm like, sorry, we're a legit business. You pay taxes, I pay taxes. We all pay taxes. That's how it works here. And um, you know, I don't mind throwing staff extra cash here and there. Hey, good job this weekend. You know, here's an extra 50 bucks or 100 bucks. I don't mind doing that. It's above and beyond their regular pay, which Jamie and I do do that because we're very appreciative when we get to go away and things like that. But I don't, I don't pay people off the books um, so, they, so they can avoid um, losing their benefits that we're all paying for. So um, unfortunately, it's a, it's a big standard, standard practice in the restaurant industry. Big standard practice in the restaurant industry because restaurant owners know that they can they can save a lot of a lot of taxes. A lot of people don't realize like if we're paying somebody ten dollars an hour, which is not legal by the way, but if we're paying ten somebody ten dollars an hour in the business world, we're actually really paying them thirteen dollars an hour because almost thirty percent more goes to their benefits and taxes. So every time every time an employee every time taxes are taken out of your check, if you're an employee. We as restaurant owners or business owners in general have to match those taxes. So if you're getting like 20%, 30% of your check, guess what? We're, we have to double that now. Um, so they're not only taxing the employees, they're taxing the employer. So when people come to work for off the books, you know, that there's double taxes not being paid on that individual and they're working the system. A lot of people just work the system like crazy. It's insane and now more than ever. So. Um, but we are looking for one more team member in the kitchen. If anybody knows anybody that wants to work for a legitimate paycheck, uh, we are looking for one more person in the kitchen, one more team member, uh, looking for a line cook. It's gonna be a very busy summer this year. And um, we've got lots of hours for people. We start another project in the June uh, where it takes a lot of my time. And then of course the Airbnb. And we've done a lot, doing lots and lots of catering, small caterings for like 20, 30 people at our Airbnb and at other Airbnbs. It's fantastic. Um, so got some updates coming for the Airbnb because we're getting ready to put a pool in there. So I'm gonna show some pictures as soon as we start construction up there and show everybody that. That's gonna be really cool. Um, folks, that is it for now. I've gotta get back in the office. Got a busy day today. Um, I'm gonna be at the Airbnb most of the day. We have a lot of small, small minor construction jobs. Paint this, paint that. Um, more landscaping, so I'm there with the crew all day yesterday and mostly all day today. We open at five o'clock today, six, four, seven, three thousand. Crab mac and cheese is our nine ninety nine special today, and then um, burgers tonight nine ninety nine. Our burgers are one ounce bigger now, so we made them bigger recently. A hundred percent grass fed. Prior to this, they were um, it's just like two weeks ago, like really soon, they were um, pasture raised, where they were fed a little bit of grain to finish. Now we're switched to a 100% grass-fed, grass-finished burger, and it's one ounce bigger. Um, same price though, same price. We did not change our price. We're trying not to change prices. It is insane. Like we work with several clients, um, coaching several clients in restaurants, restaurant owners, and like one of the common topics with every one of our clients is, I have time to raise my prices, and they raise their prices two weeks earlier. Like we have, we monitor, we mo they monitor their, their competition's prices and sometimes they go on their competition's prices, which I've never tell people to do that. But if your competition's raising their price a dollar on a burger, you can probably raise yours a dollar on a burger is probably the, 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 the rule of that. And I gotta tell you, when I go over numbers with these other restaurant owners, like what they were paying for this and now what they're paying for it is insane. I mean, certain things have doubled almost doubled, a $6 a pound item was $4 a pound 
um, two, three months ago, four months ago, at the beginning of the year. So if the con conversation is constant about, about places upping their prices. We have recently had a, a situation with our lobster meat that our lobster meat went from 22 a pound to 26 a pound to $40 a pound lobster meat. And when you start getting those high numbers, the lobster mac and cheese is just, you know, we either had to raise it, almost double it, right? You can't, you can't double something. You can't even add five bucks onto a dish because it just, it wouldn't look good. So we took it off the menu. Now we have crab mac and cheese. We are able to lower the price a little bit, but crab even took a $5 a pound increase, the crab that we were using per pound. Um, I mean, literally like everything is going up. So if a restaurant's raising their prices right now, it's very merited. Um, things, I mean, it's just, I mean, chicken wings. Some places are putting chicken wings market price now because of, um, because of, of, of the, what chicken wings went to. They went from $1.81 a pound, conventional wings, to almost four, four fifty a pound. So some restaurants, some bars, it's market price. It's like, we don't know what's happening. And if they can't get it, they'll like, oh well, because it's a losing proposition um, um, at, at these higher price points. So bear bear with us folks at all, all the restaurants, because prices, you know, any good business person is gonna have to, gonna have to say at some point, I have to raise the prices or move my menu or offer different things, different pricing structures. So we actually increased our burger one ounce um, and made it all 100% grass fed and didn't have to change our price. So we're really proud of that. Really, really super proud. And if you follow us through this whole pandemic, at the very beginning, we actually lowered our prices and brought some prices down um, because we wanted things to be affordable and we made things a la carte because if you don't want potatoes, you don't want this, you don't have to order it. So instead of ordering a $30 steak, you order a $19 steak and you just add whatever side you want on and it comes out to a better price. So um, that's what we ended up doing. And that that is... That still holds true. We did. Uh, we still have that 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 structure, pricing structure for our our quote unquote entrees, which um, like the steak, the salmon, things like that. Um, we still include the rice with the hot pot, and it's actually in the hot pot now. Really, really awesome dish, the hot pot. But instead of raising that price, we were able to serve a little less rice, a little less vegetables, make the presentation still awesome, and um, not have to raise the price. Because now shrimp, shrimp is the latest thing that took a, a price increase. And last week. We were down to like literally two orders of shrimp left, like two pounds, maybe four orders of shrimp. We were down to like one, like 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 just like a couple or knew a couple another hour in the kitchen we would have been out of shrimp um, because we were shorted the week before we couldn't get the shrimp we normally use. And I went to a restaurant depot in Hackensack. I told the story last week. I went to a restaurant depot in Hackensack, and I went through all the shrimp, every single bag of shrimp there, and I just couldn't get myself to buy any of them because they're all from. China, Bangladesh, um, they're all pumped with sodium, they're all pumped, and, and I just couldn't get myself to, to buy any of those to serve. I was like, you know what, if we run out of shrimp, we run out of shrimp, it's one of those things. Um, somebody was upset with us last week because we ran out of brisket. Um, I'm just not gonna buy any brisket. Our brisket's you know, very, very high quality, it's grass-fed, I use one source for it, and we were out, and somebody goes, well, you know, you have ratted the brisket as you promised. I'm like, you know, it's a special, and yeah, I'm gonna run out of things because it's just, it's juggling this. So um, juggling getting things in and not being available is tough right now, really tough. And with all the price increases, it's really tough. We got some beautiful kale in today from a local farm. Like some real, you know, actually yesterday, some great red Russian kale. That'll be on our menu. There's still local asparagus around. As long as we can do local asparagus, we'll be doing it. Um, so that's exciting. Um, all right, that's it folks. I'm gonna get going. Um, and everybody have an amazing, amazing day. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, thank you for your support. Thank you for everything. And we wouldn't be here without you guys. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, let's talk to you soon.